Welcome to the tutorial creating a simple cutout animation part 4. In this tutorial we're going to go over a few techniques that Stacy did not touch upon either because they were not required for this specific scene or because they differ from his animation style. So to begin let's just take a look at the scene one more time. Okay, well this is just a little thing, but let me zoom out to show you. So this gray box that you see here, that's the frame of the camera. So this is what you would actually see in this shot through the camera view. So let me click on the render mode to show you what I mean. So you see here the Karate Rabbit's ears are cut off. So I'd like to frame this a little bit better. So uh, let's scroll down in the timeline. This is not one of the techniques, by the way. This is just something that uh, bothers me a bit. Um, and let's uncollapse the camera peg and scroll down until we see the Y position as that determines the height. So I'm going to uncollapse the data view and I'm going to bring the red playhead to the last keyframe uh, for the camera truck. And then for the Y position I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, so something like that's pretty good. So then I'm just going to recollapse the data view and the camera peg. And I'm going to scroll back up to the Karate Rabbit. Let's scroll to the end as well over here. So as you may have noticed in the previous videos, uh, Stacy doesn't use motion tweening or interpolation between his keyframes. Um, so to create velocity or ease in or ease out, all the things that make a character look like uh, you know, a, an actual living being and not just a robot, he did by the way he distributed his keyframes. So in certain areas he has very choppy moves so he brought his keyframes very close together, it's one choppy move after another, and then in certain places he had long pauses held. And then smaller movements anticipating something that's about to happen before a big move. So he did that on his own and a lot of animators do do it this way. However, you can use computer-generated drawings, otherwise known as motion tweening or interpolation, um, and then change the velocity to give your character a more lifelike feel. So let's select the Transform tool, then the Karate Rabbit's arm in the camera view. Now let's use the keyboard shortcut B to go down the chain to get the child. Then let's click on the center on selection button in the timeline view to find these drawings in the layer stack. And I'm just going to pull this so we can actually read the layer name. So it's the lower arm here and we want to be sure that we have the peg selected. Okay, so it's the peg perfect. And then let's scroll across to about frame 125 and let's add a keyframe by clicking on the keyframe button. And then let's rotate that hand and arm in the camera view. So right now if we scroll our playhead across you'll see that from frame 119 to 124 the arm holds this position and then at 125 it snaps downwards like that. So let's go back to frame 119 and then click on the set motion keyframe button. You'll notice that a gray arrow appeared in the timeline. And now if we move from frame 119 to 125, we'll see that the computer has generated a bunch of drawings in between those two keyframes. Let's do the same thing for the Karate Rabbit's other arm. I'm going to select the upper arm in the camera view then click on B until I have the entire arm selected. Go to center on selection. We're sure that we have the peg here. Scroll down to frame 125. Add a keyframe. Rotate the entire arm in the camera view. Click on frame 119. Set it as a motion keyframe. 
And now when we scroll down, we'll see that the computer has generated drawings for that arm as well. So then let's, let's just play this back and forth a little bit. And I'm going to grab the other black uh, triangular arrow that looks like this here at the top so that I can select a specific range to play back. And then if we click on the play button, you can see the computer generated animation. So it's not bad, but you might notice that it has a sort of mechanical feel. It's extremely even um, and precise. And the fact of the matter is, um, when the Karate Rabbit is making that move, he would actually probably maybe slow into it and then snap very quickly into this pose. So in order to give that kind of slow to fast movement, we have to add an ease in or ease out for that movement. So we can do this by opening the functions for a peg. So if it's clicking on the black arrow here, and also the down arrow to reveal the transformations that you're able to apply. And then let's scroll down and find the rotation angle Z because this is a rotation that we just created uh, for the Karate Rabbit's arms. So if we double click on that layer, we bring up the Bezier editor for that specific animated function. And what we're looking at specifically is frame 119 to frame 125. So it's this keyframe to this keyframe here. So let's see if we can zoom in on that. And let's ease in a bit and then sort of have the movement go very quickly like that. So there's a sort of plateau and then a rapid movement. And you can actually play this movement while you adjust your curve. So say I wanted to adjust my curve like that instead. So this would actually go very quickly and then slow down. You can adjust your curve and then play back the results right away um, until you get the movement or the speed or velocity that you're looking for. And I only did it for the one arm here, so if I wanted to do it for the forearm and hand of the Karate Rabbit's left arm, um, I would have to go in the timeline. and look for this as well. Something like that. So once again, you're easing, there's a bit of a plateau, and then there's a quick drop, so slow to fast. So you can also change the parameters for multiple keyframes at the same time instead of going in and individually um, adjusting. If you know that you'd like to change a movement for the entire Karate Rabbit. So you can do this, I'm going to collapse this, by going up to the master peg for the Karate Rabbit and selecting an area where there's interpolation. So here there is no interpolation, so I'll click on the set motion keyframe button. So I'd actually have to make some type of a motion here, so let's move the Karate Rabbit. So I'm going to move him from left to right, which is obviously very unrealistic, but at least you'll see the slowing in and slowing out. So if I press play, that's very mechanical. Once again, he just slides across. So if we wanted to add some type of velocity on that movement 
for all the keyframes um, in this stack because this is collapsed. So you could either do this, or you could shift and select like that. So it's up to you. It's actually probably more efficient though to collapse the master peg and just select this one keyframe. You can right click on the keyframe and select set ease for multiple parameters. And in the set ease for multiple parameters dialog box, you can decide on the transformations that you'd like to um, apply this ease to. So you can do it for the motion, rotation, scale, or skew, and you can actually get rid of some of those options as well. Um, you can play with the Bezier handles directly on the curve. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you know what values you're looking for, you can type them directly into these fields. Um, and when you apply, it's going to be applied to all the keyframes in that stack. Um, and if you go apply next, it'll actually take you to the next keyframe over. And once again, you can play with that curve or you can go apply previous. Right now, this is a stop motion keyframe, so it's not really going to do anything uh, despite what you do to the handles here. But um, you get the idea that if there's interpolated movement between all these keyframes, you could go along the entire keyframe row and set the easing for multiple keyframes um, in this stack. So the next thing I'd like to discuss with you is how to order layers over time. And what that means is that every single one of these body parts exists on a layer. And sometimes when you're animating, you need to keyframe um, a layer moving along the Z axis. So for this, let's bring up the top perspective. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Try to figure out where the karate rabbit is. So it's this guy right here. Okay, there we go. So let's go back to this keyframe here and let's move this arm, the entire arm backwards. And as we move it back, you'll notice that the arm actually sits between the tail and the body, but that's not correct. The arm would actually be behind the tail. So on this keyframe, what we could do is we could move the arm from being in its original Z position to being back behind the tail. So with the playhead on this last row of keyframes, and with the arm fully selected in the camera view, you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt an up or down arrow to bring the entire arm forwards or backwards. So when you're looking at your arrow keys on your keyboard, you should look at it through an aerial perspective. So the up key brings the arm back into space and the down key brings the arm forward or towards you or towards the camera. So I'm going to hold down Alt and use the up key to bring the arm back. And if you've noticed, this pink line through the aerial perspective, which is actually this arm, actually got nudged backwards in space, so along the z-axis. And now when you move the arm, you'll see that it smoothly glides behind the tail, and you don't even notice that at this position, it's actually in front of the tail, so the z movement goes unnoticed. So that's it for the tutorial, creating a simple cutout animation part 4. And that's also the last video in the cutout animation series.